Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of the Daily Gold. Now, Jordan, when you follow along with a lot of the gold commentators, one thing really stands out to me as we approach this start of the Fed's rate hiking cycle. Fact of the matter is, everybody seems to be saying, at least again, gold commentators saying that gold is going to go up when these rate hikes start. They look back at a couple of the recent rate hiking cycles and they say, look at gold's performance on the back of the start of rate hikes. And well, that's going to happen again this time. That is as we pretty much stay right around this 1800. We're up to about 1830, just over 1830 now. Jordan, you've even said that usually gold does do well on the back of rate hikes. It's just when we hear everybody saying that causes a bit of concern for me. What's your takeaway from how everyone seems to be on that side of the boat saying gold's going higher when these rate hikes start? Well, that, uh, that's a really good question, Corey. My takeaway is that the gold bugs and commentators, of which I certainly am one, they're leaving out the part where before that happens, usually the market has a nasty sell-off. So the gold bugs and gold bulls are conveniently leaving that out. Like I've tried to point this out a few times in recent weeks, uh, and this is something I, I point you know I pointed out to my subscribers and why I've been very cautious coming into this rate hike is because if you look at the last three, there was a big dump. I mean, you had the Huey was down, I think at least 25% in the like two months before the hike. And also the gold price was down. These are the last, the start of the last three cycles, 11 to 12% every time right before the hike. And then of course you got the big rally, you know, and another thing we have to point out, two of those three were at the end of the two worst bear markets, essentially excluding 80 to 82. I mean, those are the three worst, but the other two worst, you, know, you had the late nineties, then you had the forever bear from 2011 to the end of 2015. So the market was at, you know, the very end of the two worst bears, essentially. So looking at where the market is now, I mean, it's at the end of, you could call it a cyclical bear or a really nasty correction. But, you know, now we're about five weeks away from the rate hike. And yeah, I mean, you're, you're not going to get a huge move in gold higher after the Fed hikes if the current context remains as it is. In other words, if the market hasn't plunged over the preceding weeks. Now, if we in the next couple of days, if we started a plunge here, we saw gold break down, you know, the mid 1600s to test the 40 month moving average. Beautiful. Then it would be in position where that's the end of uh, the cyclical bear market, you could say, uh, or nasty correction. However, with the market as it is now, the only way it would keep going up with the Fed starting to hike is you have to have inflation and inflation expectations continuing to rise. And the reality is they're probably peaking. If you look at the bond market, they've already peaked. You know, I know that commodity prices have continued to go higher. I mean, that's mostly oil. Oil tends to be a late cycle thing when oil is really strong. So, you know, and I think at, at some point, as we get into this Fed hiking cycle, the concern is going to shift to growth really quickly away from inflation. And so to me, I'm not, you know, when people say, oh, well, gold is, it goes up with rate hikes. Yeah. I mean, that happened in the seventies and eighties because you had inflation was rising and also in the mid two thousands, because inflation was rising to a higher level as the fed was hiking. And so we don't have that, that precondition for gold going higher during the cycle. I mean, if we don't see gold, break down before the hike, then clearly the major catalyst will probably be the Fed shifting policy and stopping hikes. And you go back to 2018, I mean, gold bottomed in August. That was four months before they ended hikes. So, you know, it's up to anybody how long this hiking cycle will last, but maybe gold will bottom, uh, you know, maybe the cycle will only last six or eight months and, you know, gold could bottom two, three, four months after it starts this hike. But yeah, these are just other scenarios we have to pay attention to, particularly if, again, the market doesn't break down when the Fed starts hiking, as it usually does, at least recently in recent decades. Well, then, Jordan, just to summarize, to make sure that 
I got this, and then hopefully our listeners get this. It sounds like you've got three scenarios that are potential. The best one would be the sell-off before the rate hiking start, where we finally get that last capitulation move, and then it would be an easy bounce from there. Part two would be if gold keeps moving higher, and if we saw higher inflation keep growing, then there's a potential that gold could keep blasting higher and higher and break eventually through that resistance. But it seems like the most likely of the three is the one where we're just stuck in this weird sideways channel going into it. And you're suggesting that, if I'm understanding you correctly, we'd have to actually go through the whole rate hiking cycle, however long that is. And then when the Fed finally reverses course, you think that could be the uh, impetus to get things moving. Is that, uh, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, I mean, I think the middle scenario is is very, very unlikely. It's It's got to be the, the first or the third. And to speak on the third, my point in the last cycle was gold bottomed four months before the last hike, which was actually sooner than I expected. I remember at the time. And so if this cycle is only going to last you know, six, eight months, nine months, five months, I mean, it's very possible that gold could bottom maybe when they do the second hike. That's just a guess. I mean, they're probably going to do a 50 point hike, I think, in March. You know, the second hike will come in May. In that scenario where gold doesn't break down before the first hike, I would, that's just a guess I'm put throwing out right now. Maybe it bottoms when they do the second hike in May because maybe they're only able to do three or four hikes. You know, who knows? Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to be able to hike more than four times. That's just my guess. I would probably say three, but if they're able to do, if they're able to hike three or four times at three or four different meetings, then in this scenario where we don't get the breakdown now, my guess would be gold could bottom after, you know, the second or the third hike. It doesn't necessarily have to you know, bottom at the tail end of the cycle. I, I don't think that would happen. It seems to me that as much as we're talking about the start of the rate hiking cycle, it's more about the guidance of how long the Fed is going to be hiking. And yeah, you're right, Jordan. It's probably not at the tail end of the cycle when the Fed stops hiking because you know what? The market looks ahead. So it probably will be before the Fed needs to stop hiking. But again, this is all so much just a what if type of question because the only thing that we know for sure is that the Fed is going to be hiking or it seems like the Fed's going to be hiking in March. Now, a lot can happen in about that one month time. And you're even thinking a 50 basis point hike. I still think it'll be a 25 basis point hike. Either way, the Fed will be hiking. And you would think that higher interest rates would hurt gold. Does that mean we need to focus a bit more on the bond market too to see how the bond market is forecasting or discounting future rate hikes? You, we always have to watch the market. The Fed follows the market. The bond market, though. I was saying bond market more so than the broad averages. Yeah, well, I, yeah, that, that's what I mean. I mean, the, the, yeah, the bond market, not the stock market. But yeah, the Fed follows the bond market, even though you know, when the market tells them to hike, they tend to follow it with a real lag, as we've seen this time. But I, I would watch the yield curve and various yield curves. I mean, if you look at the 10s and 2s, I think I mentioned this last week, it's around 60 basis points. The average when the Fed has started to hike is 115 basis points. So, I mean, that tells you that the Fed, obviously, they should have already started hiking. Like, they're way late. So I think they're going to have to make up ground. That's why I think they're going to do 50. But yeah, the yield curve is going to tell the tail, Corey, because... If the yield curve continues to dive towards zero in the months ahead, then the Fed will obviously have to stop sooner than they'd like. Now, if the yield curve, if it you know maintains itself around 60 basis points, maybe even rises up a little bit, you know, and that's the story for the next couple of quarters, then the Fed can probably hike throughout this year. So, I mean, that, and as well as financial conditions, there's a Bloomberg Financial Conditions Index. I haven't looked at it in a week or so, but that has been increasing, which signals, you know, tightening of policy. And so another thing to keep in mind is the Fed hiking rates, that's not the only way that policy can be tightened. I mean, higher inflation also hurts. I mean, that tightens in a way because the cure for high prices is high prices, so they say. So, you know, that that has its own element of tightening. You have the dollar, which has been fairly strong. I mean, if that makes another leg higher, you know, that that's more tightening. If the stock market weakens and sells off more, 
you know, that, that's more tightening. So all these, there's all these market-based factors that also play into the equation. So you, you can see policy tighten a lot without the Fed having to do actual rate hikes. But in any case, for me, it all comes back to the yield curve and watch that because if that dives lower towards zero over the weeks and months ahead, then you're going to see the Fed stop. If it doesn't, then the Fed will keep going. Well, and just one last question, Jordan, on this topic, and that is, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with inflation yet. As you've noted, you think that maybe we're at a high water mark and we'll start trending down, but it has been more persistent than other people have expected. And we really haven't had that much time to process what's going to happen in the bond market when they finally get done with their tapering. I mean, they're just getting that finished up. And we we haven't had a few months without the Fed in there buying bonds to see what's really going to happen in the bond market. Is there a risk that they're starting this so late and it's already such a flat yield curve and they're already so far behind the curve with where inflation is now that we don't even see the effects of these rate hikes for half a year to a year from now? And are they at risk of the yield curve actually inverting and, and maybe heading into a recessionary period? Yes, I think that's a clear risk. Now, I, I will say I, the bond market is not, this is not my expertise. I'm sure you have plenty of other guests who can speak on that much more accurately than I can. But again, I just come back to the yield curve and it's already telling us that there's a risk with them starting so late. And then even if inflation, even if it doesn't come down, I mean, even, I mean if it stabilizes or comes down a little bit, that's still going to be a problem for everyone. So they're in a really, really difficult situation. And I think at this point, you know, any outcome is is probably going to be bullish for gold and we just have to wait for those outcomes. I just, I don't see the Fed being able to tighten. I just think it's unlikely they're going to be able to tighten for the entire year, given where the yield curve is, given where, I mean, as you noted, I mean, that that's the... Ta- the tapering, that's a whole nother issue. We've yet to see the effect of that. Inflation remaining a problem, even if it's already peaked. The fiscal stimulus, the, we don't have any of that coming. You know, the effect of that is gone. So I just, I, I think at some point this year, the Fed will have to stop policy. And y- yeah, we could have some real growth recession fears in the second half of this year, which is why I said, I mean, I think that's, You know, and this this is important for gold because, you know, when the narrative shifts away from fears about inflation to fears about a growth and recession, you know, that's going to coincide with gold really starting to outperform. So, I mean, it makes sense that gold will bottom out. If it hasn't already bottomed out, it makes sense it'll bottom out sometime this year over the next few months and then really get going in the second half of the year when the concerns shift to growth and recession because that yield curve has about a 99% track record. So we see that thing getting close to zero around the middle of the year. That's going to be a really bad sign for the following year. And that's obviously a really good sign for gold. All right, Jordan, we'll wrap it up here. Look, there's no doubt this year is going to be so interesting to see how far not just the Fed, but other central banks can get through this tightening process, how the market reacts and how that even does trickle down into the precious metals. Right now, though, precious metals continue to be boring, but they are showing a bit of a grinding nature higher, which is nice to see. And the stocks, well, they've recovered from some pretty close to breakdown levels. Again, we're all just seemingly waiting for it's this week inflation data and in about a month's time, the Fed rate hiking cycle. Boy, oh boy, we don't know how it's all going to play out, but it'll sure be interesting to follow along. Jordan. Thank you, as always, for your time, buddy. We'll chat again next week.